Water cooling parts for Skunk Works were provided by Performance PCs. For the largest online selection of PC modding and water cooling parts, head to performancepcs.com. Well, the system is done, I think. Is it ever really done? I mean, honestly, have I ever really been done with this system? So anytime I do any videos or any Instagram photos or anything about Skunk Works, I always get the inevitable, Jay, why are you wasting so much money on this? The system, as I've said, it's a labor of love and it's a symbol of the channel. Therefore, it's always gonna be evolving. So get used to seeing this thing get upgraded all the time because that's just the way we do around here. The system is always going to be evolving with the channel. That's the point of it. That was the whole reason I started building this system was to just kind of keep it going. Sort of like the Winchester Mansion up in San Jose, only I'm not being haunted. If you guys don't know what that means, then go check out the Winchester Mansion website. It's kind of interesting backstory, but anyway, we are way off topic. We'll go ahead and do a little rationale real quick when it comes to the system. The 5960X is absolutely monstrous, but it's actually becoming the bottleneck now in my system where depending on where my overclocks are on the 5960X, I'm getting some massive swings on FPS when it comes to the benchmarks of the Titan Xs. In fact, going from 4.0 gigahertz to 4.5 gigahertz netted me over 25 frames per second averages when it comes to synthetic benchmarks, which we all know are not as demanding as actual games. So that was a bit of a mind blower thinking, my 5960X is becoming the freaking bottleneck. What kind of world do we live in where that happens? I don't wanna live on this planet anymore. Now I'm not putting up any of the three-way Titan X benchmarks yet because I still have a lot of tweaking and tuning to do. And by tweaking, obviously, I mean settings, people. I will say this though, and this part I found a little bit interesting and I'll do a more in-depth video of my findings after this. One 980 reference versus one Titan X was a huge difference between the two. However, in a three-way config, it's much more narrow. In fact, there, it's very, minimal gains over my 980s currently when it comes to three-way. So we're gonna be playing around with that and seeing exactly what's going on. But card for card, huge gap, but in three-way, it's not as big as I thought it would be. That's what she said, but she loves me anyway. So we'll definitely be doing a little bit of research and seeing what the heck is going on there. But when it comes to another question I'm constantly asked is, am I gonna do custom BIOS on these Titan Xs? I think the answer is yes. They're just not going as far as I want on the overclocks. Yeah, I'm getting 1480 megahertz out of these in three-way SLI, but I want more power. 
It's always a risk. In fact, I've blown up a 780. If you guys don't remember, I, I actually killed a 780 by doing a BIOS flash. It was my fault for putting the wrong BIOS on the card, but I digress. Now, when it comes to the radiators, plenty of people ask me why I went with thinner radiators and added a third radiator in there. Well, first of all, when it comes to, and I'll do a video on this as well, when it comes to the length of the radiator, that matters more than the thickness of the radiator, way more. You could take a radiator that is 45 millimeters or 60 millimeters thick and put it against the same size radiator that's only 30 millimeters thick and you'll see very minimal differences. But you could take a radiator like a 120 and compare it to a 240 and see massive differences on TDP and watts cooled and displaced. So that is why I did that. I went with a thinner 560 for better airflow through the rad and added a 280 to the GPU loop to keep things as cool as possible. These cards, these Titan Xs, are higher TDP, higher wattage than the 980s. And the 980s were getting up into the mid-50s on temperatures, and I wasn't happy with that. Yeah, fantastic temperatures, but I wasn't happy with seeing mid-50s on a three-way SLI water-cooled graphics cards. I mean, they were doing so well on air in the 60s and 70s on air, 50s was not very impressive. But I will say this, even though I'm not giving you guys numbers yet on the Titan X three-way benchmarks, I will give you some preliminary numbers on temperatures where at stock speeds, I was getting mid 30s at load, mid 20s at idle. That's already way cooler than my 980s were getting. And at load while overclocked, I think the max temp I saw so far was 44 degrees. So that is a 10 degree drop on a higher wattage card by adding a 280 and going with thinner rads. I think you guys will see the point I'm gonna to get to with the radiator video where I talk about that, especially with the summer temps coming up. The other thing I did in this system was I used the exact same G-Skill RAM, uh, the Ripjaw 4, but I went from 16 gigs to 32 gigs. Unfortunately, when DX12 launches, I'm still gonna have more GPU memory than I do CPU memory. 36 gigs versus 32 gigs. But hey, you know, first world problems, I guess. There was a lot of questions too about why I changed up the loop, why I moved the pumps and all of that. And really it kind of comes down to a few things. One, getting less components out of the basement and up into the main part of the case. One, gives me easier access to pump control and speed. And two, it improves airflow down in the basement part of the case. The more junk I had down there, radiators and tubes and stuff, the more restriction there was for, air for airflow to get across the bottom of the basement. The bottom of this case is completely segregated from the top. So the GPUs have their own air cooling environment and the CPU has its own air cooling environment and the two don't cross contaminate each other. Well, except for the little bit of heat that comes off the back plates of the, of the GPUs, but you kind of see where I'm going with that. Now, putting the pumps up on the top makes it, uh, one, it fills in the space a little bit more, and two, it just makes it look better as far as I'm concerned. I love pump reservoir combos. I think it fills up the space nicely, and the reorientation of the tubes fills in things really well in that case so it looks less empty but doesn't look cluttered. So that was why I did it. I wanted to see more tubing. I like to see a lot of tubing. I like a lot of busy work going on in the cases when it comes to water cooling. So having that very minimal barely any tube showing was actually bothering me. That bothered me most about the system, even more than that stupid kink that showed up in the tube after I had to move uh, to the different motherboard and didn't line up perfectly. So I like the way it looks now. And really that's what's most important about this system is how I feel about it. But it is still a community effort. So a lot of the things that uh, you guys say about the system, I do take into consideration. And I think the overall result looks really, really good. Now I worked on this thing for a solid week. I have worked my fingers absolutely raw with constantly turning fittings and screws and stuff. Even though I have a power driver for screwdrivers and stuff, all the fitting crankings, uh, the fingerprint reader on my iPhone won't even recognize any of my fingers anymore. So it's gonna take a few weeks for these to recover. Uh, but I do have more custom builds coming. I still have to finish the Parvin build. Finally got in the pieces I was waiting for from England. It took the United States a month and a half to get it through customs, which was Absolutely stupid, but anyway. We're gonna finish the Parvin build and we are gonna do full benchmarks on this thing in a future video, not too far in the future. I just wanna get through some of the tweaking and stuff I need to do on this thing. If you guys wanna interact and don't wanna deal with the comments that take place down below, uh, feel free to follow on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And as always, thanks for watching and making builds like this possible. In order to say thank you, I teased in a previous video that uh, I'm gonna be doing something involving one of my 980s. In the very near future, we will be doing a giveaway where I give away one of my 980s, but here's the thing. 
you guys get to pick which 980 you want. With the exception of the Hall of Fame card, that card is staying with me. But if you guys want one of the water-cooled 980s and you win, you say, hey, Jay, I want a water-cooled 980. You want my classified? Take it. You want the 980 hybrid? Take it. You get to pick as the winner. We'll be doing more details about that in the future. But as always, guys, for now, thanks for watching.